Well, good afternoon and thanks once again for joining us. Coming to you today live at Piney Park, where obviously one of our ADF and health pop-up vaccination clinics is underway again. Uh, after a bit of uh, inclement weather during the week, uh, we're back here today and tomorrow, right through until 4.30, starting again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And I'm joined today by Assistant Commissioner Brett Greentree to talk a bit how some of the, the wellbeing and check-ins are going across the region uh, and police doing a fantastic job in supporting the entire community at the moment. Up until eight o'clock last night, the Western New South Wales Local Health District has 42 new cases of COVID-19. A 34 of those are in the Dubbo local government area, two from Wellington. So we're breaking that down to 32 and two for Wellington. Burke has six. Mudgee and Bathurst both have one for a total of 42 across this district. In the far west, Wilcannia has recorded four new cases up until eight o'clock last night. So the total now for the health districts is 485 and for Dubbo, 383. 11 of these new cases are known to be infectious in the community, uh, in Dubbo, in Wellington, and also concerningly in Mudgee. 19 of those cases are linked to other known cases, 17 are household contacts, and two are linked to a known case or cluster. 23 are still being investigated at this point. We do also have to report today some positive sewerage detection at both Brewarrina and Baradine. So that is of concern. Uh, we've had a couple of cases of, of positive at Brewarrina. It is being suggested if you are in either of these locations in particular, that you immediately, as quickly as possible, get tested and isolate in the meantime. There's very real concern around that sewage detection at Brewarrina and also at Baradine. As far as testing, 4,800 tests across the region in the last 24 hours. So look, that's up a little bit on yesterday, but it's still really only less than half where we were a, a few days ago. So the encouragement is there again for you to please come forward with any symptoms, any mild symptoms at all, or even the concern that maybe you've been connected to somebody who's been at a venue of concern, or if you've been to one of the venue of concerns. Uh, those venues of concern are regularly updated. We keep that list uh, updated as much as possible and check in with the New South Wales Health website to get that update. And please also continue to let people in your circle, your family, your friends know. Uh, people that may not have access to internet or aren't regularly checking, you can be that point of contact for them and help us make sure that everyone's getting that message quite clearly. Testing clinics, well there have been a few changes. There, there was obviously a testing clinic here at uh, Piney Park. That's now closed down. Those uh, teams have moved into some of the, uh, the home testing and also consolidating at Dubbo Showground. Around the region though, essentially all of our testing facilities remain open. Narrow Mine at the Showground, AREC at Mudgee, uh, all of the sites. Uh, maybe some slight changes to times. Again, you can check uh, at the pinned post on the front of my Facebook, Facebook page to get the details. But essentially you can get tested wherever you are this weekend and that's really important to do. Vaccination, big news. As of this morning, we have uh, this state's first drive-through vaccination clinic. It's located at the Dubbo Showground. Uh, it is a bookings only facility. So it will be taking bookings in a different way to the walk-in clinic and, and, and the clinic that's been operating at the showground till this point. Um, but it's, it's an amazing setup. I joined the CEO of Western New South Wales Health District, Scott McLaughlin, and also the Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council, uh, Stephen Lawrence, there yesterday for a look through. Fiona and her team have done an amazing job in setting up this facility. Uh, yesterday was a bit of a, a testing day. Today is really ramping through, hoping to do around 200 vaccinations a day. Uh, the booking that we are linking to on this Facebook post will take you to a very simple booking system where you actually book your first and your second doses through that. It'll be a really integral part of what we're doing going forward. So please check that out from today. Link it up on this Facebook post. Drive through vaccines starting as of today. Uh, of course, the pop-in continues. And here today, it's a beautiful day. There's hundreds of people that have already come through uh, to, to get their first either Pfizer or AstraZeneca dose here. Uh, this will be open again obviously tomorrow, 9 o'clock till 4.30 uh, and a great chance for everyone to come along. We'll show you sort of there's a bit of a line up here at the moment uh, but plenty of room still for this afternoon. If you are coming, make sure you give yourself a little bit of time. Uh, they're basically stopping the line up 
to give the the, uh, the vaccinators the chance to finish people by sort of 4.30, quarter to five. So be here by three o'clock at the latest, really, uh, and you'll hopefully get, get in today. If not, it'll be tomorrow. And then coming back in, in roughly three weeks' time to do those second doses. Be prepared, be kind. As, you can, as you've maybe just seen, that people are really spacing very nicely. Maybe bring a drink, maybe bring some food. If you've got problems standing up, maybe bring a light chair so you can sit down as the line moves forward. Uh, and obviously you've got to bring things like some identification. If you've got Medicare, we need you to bring your Medicare card. If you don't have that, but you have your uh, individual health identification number, bring that. If you haven't got that, just make sure you do have some ID with you. Now the Australian Defence Force, apart from being here, uh, teaming up with Health to move right across the north and the west of our region again today. So Trangy happening again today after a pretty successful day yesterday, along with Brewarrina and Forbes is starting today, which is great news. Uh, some more details about what's happening next week. There are still some localities being worked on, uh, but from uh, from Monday, Mudgee, 11 o'clock at the Stables, Golgong from uh, 10 o'clock at the Memorial Hall and Ningen at the Showground Pavilion there, Monday from 11 o'clock as well. All of that detail again on the New South Wales Health website. And I mentioned yesterday, but just for those who are having any sorts of trouble with getting transport to a vaccination clinic of any kind, Transport for New South Wales is teaming up with uh, some of our community transport providers to make that more available. We've got links to that. We had links to that yesterday as well. If you do need some help, there is help wherever you are across the region. So, so make sure you get in contact. And again, tell friends and family, if you know somebody who may struggle to get to a clinic, please put them in touch with uh, the, uh, the best provider in their particular area. And the other thing to remember is if you have a, a booking for a vaccination, so whether that's through the walk-in, uh, sorry, whether that's through the clinic at the showground that's uh, replaced the Monero Plaza clinic, whether it's with your GP or whether it's with a pharmacist, either keep that booking or if you decide to come to one of the walk-in clinics, please cancel the booking. We need as many of those available to as many people as possible. So we're really asking you to make sure you cancel any bookings you've already made to make sure there's plenty of room for everyone. Vaccination at Wellington is going outstandingly well. Uh, that is closed across the weekend. It's running Monday to Friday, 10 till 4. That number to book, again from Monday, 6845 5423, 10 till 4. And I can tell you this week, 828 vaccinations in Wellington, which is fantastic. Well done to the WAX team, the Swift Street Medical team and the Health Service team who have got through 828. That's a combo of Pfizer and AstraZeneca and they'll be back into it again on Monday. So well done. There are still appointments to book. I mentioned the drive through clinic. Check out that link and you can start booking there. There's also uh, through that Woolpack Pavilion more bookings available every day. Go through the eligibility checker or you can call on 1800 571 155. And GPs and pharmacists, lots of availability, particularly for AstraZeneca. We're encouraging everyone to come forward, make a booking, make sure you're in for the vaccination. Again, there is plenty of information here. A lot of it contained within this post as either a comment or at the front of the post. Check in there. If you've got any questions, more than happy to hear them, but do try and find out the information for yourself before you do that. I'll come back and wrap things up shortly, but let's hear from Assistant Commissioner Brett Greentree about how police operations are going. Thank you, Dougal. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just in terms of police operation, uh, which is running 24-7 right across, uh, across our western region. Um, I'm very pleased to say that uh, the amount of infringements issued for uh, offences uh, against the public health order decreased in the last 24 hours. That's uh, really good news. Um, and I'm not claiming a victory by any stretch of the imagination here, but uh, only 13 infringements uh, issued in Dubbo overnight. So I think I said yesterday it was over 50. So that's uh, fantastic. I um, hope and pray that that continues and people get the message to remain at home uh, and don't, uh, you know, don't, don't go outside, don't risk uh, your family, your community and uh, don't pay the uh, hefty fines that are on offer for those that do breach the conditions. Also throughout the region of that 100 uh, odd uh, infringements, Orange had about 18 and uh, we saw an increase in the New England area of about 28 across the New England, so that's a bit of a worry and police are ramping up their operations there to, again, get the message out, please stay at home, uh, only leave for essential reasons. Uh, majority of those tickets, yet again, for the stay at home orders. A um, Couple of uh, non-compliance with masks, but generally for those who are out and about when they just shouldn't be, uh, police are stopping and propping all the time uh, and issuing those infringements, but I'm very glad to say that uh, they have 
uh, a decrease and I hope to see a decrease again tomorrow when we look at the uh, stats overnight. In terms of emergency management, uh, again, a lot going on right across the region in our emergency operations centres. Um, <clears throat> wellbeing checks, over 400 wellbeing and check-ins, uh, 400 incidents right across the region with our uh, ADF partners in particular. I should mention uh, Will Kenya again, I think I gave him a shout out yesterday, 60 uh, or compliance checks firstly, but uh, I think one breach, which is fantastic uh, for the community there who are really uh, abiding by the message and they should be applauded. Also throughout the region with regards to uh, checking, uh, sorry, wellbeing and as part of our emergency management, over 230 wellbeing check-ins in the Arana Police District or region. So that's fantastic. Uh, you know, supplying assistance, whether that be via essentials, uh, hampers, etc. That's really good results. Also, a, uh, a, a really good story, I think, is uh, on the border with our Bogavilla and Tumala communities. Uh, over 650 uh, essential uh, and food hampers delivered to the, that community on the border since the closing of the Queensland border. That is just fantastic work with our partners at Resilience, uh, Aboriginal Affairs, and the Rural uh, Fire Service and the, and the local police district. So there's some really good stories in the emergency management space. We're continuing to work hard there. We're continuing to monitor each towns. Uh, Dougal mentioned some positive fragments in the sewerage in different locations. Again, um, you know, like our uh, health uh, partners, the police, we want you to get tested too. If uh, that's happening in your town, please get tested. Your local police are there spreading the message. Uh, we want to get through this. We'll continue to work hard all of us and uh, hopefully at the end of the day you know we'll get out of this lockdown sooner rather than later but again just that last message thank you for those who are complying it really is the majority of the community um, i should also mention permits are in place now with regards to leaving the greater sydney area if you're in regional new south wales and you're listening to this and you have family or friends in greater sydney who want to leave without a permit please please do them a favor save them the money and the grief of uh, either going to court or an infringement notice and get them to stay at home. Really good advice. Let's hope tomorrow we see uh, even less infringements issued for uh, breaches of the order. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for that, uh, thanks for that update. And uh, look, the, the main message again, it's the message we've had now for a couple of weeks, which is stay at home unless it is absolutely essential. Uh, we are seeing some of that, uh, that spread in community, which is concerning. Uh, we're hoping to see that really tighten down. One of the reasons you can leave is to get a vaccination. And we're seeing here now, there's probably a wait of about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. If you're in the Dubbo region and have some time this afternoon, we'd encourage you to come down here to the Vax pop-up clinic. And of course, check out that link for the new drive-through booking system as well. Book yourself a vaccination and stay at home as much as you absolutely can. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back again at midday tomorrow with another update.